Okay, so starting part two, um, getting ready to do some paint. Uh, I thought I'd go real quick over the procedure I use. I use the industrial purple, uh, diluted about um, four parts water to one part cleaner. I put that in a big barrel and uh, let everything soak in there and clean that off with a uh, Scotch Brite and um, a wire brush. Uh, that will cause it to flash rust almost immediately if there's not already rust underneath it. I use a prepping etch. Uh, it's got a posturic acid that will take the rust and do a chemical reaction. Uh, put this iron oxide into something else, uh, but, but basically back to iron, and you can see that's the black part there. Uh, the white part is um, just the residue. Uh, all of this will be media blasted, so all that comes off. Wipe that down. Um, I'll do primer and then also paint uh, two coats immediately after that. Um, I'm not going to use an epoxy paint or um, anything special. My shop's pretty protected, so I'm just using uh, typical rust oleum products. So media blasting is done. Uh, everything turned out really good. It's pretty easy to take everything off on a lot of rust. Um, did find that that repair also extended to the top. Um, didn't see that one. A lot of braids on there. Um, I did decide to um, take the bearings out of this. Um, I took a close look at it and then looked on the internet and I could get two new bearings for less than 40 bucks shipped to me. So I figured that out. Even though the bearings were good, I should definitely replace them. I also wanted to be able to media blast this and put it in the uh, parts cleaner. And I didn't want to do that with the bearings in there. Um, and then taking them out, um, there's always a risk that you're going to damage them a little bit. Ended up, they came out just fine, but like I said, for 40 bucks, I'm just gonna replace them. So I've got everything ready. Um, I'm probably out of time for the day, so I'm probably not gonna get a chance to do the prime and paint. Um, maybe I'll just get everything taped off and cleaned, and then uh, come back and do that later. Uh, brains will get here next week, so hopefully I'll have everything painted and ready to put back together when they get here. The painted parts are now painted. The bright work is now bright. And we're gonna get ready to put everything back together. Uh, all the bolts have been cleaned up. Uh, the paint's cured. It's ready to go back together. Um, I am going to, to letter that probably in a, a little bit of an off-white. Um, I'll wait until it's all back together to do that. I still have to go in and, and clean up um, the surfaces for the bearings and the mating parts. Um, it's going to be a little bit easier to do that when everything's mounted on the, uh, on the pole again. They got the pole clean and the base came out real nice as well. So well, let's get to it. The orange beast has made its way out of the back of the shop and press in the bearings. Uh, turned out pretty easy. Just turned that around, lowered it down, set it on the bottom. Um, I got the bearing in here, a little a block and a piece of pipe to make up the difference. And then to, to get on just on the outside of this and, and not press on the inside, um, I'm using the, the thing that goes on the bottom of the spindle to uh, to move it up and down so that just fits just right on the outer race of that so i'm going to press this in put the shaft in and then to press the one on the top yeah so predictably that piece didn't quite work so i ended up having to use a hole saw a three inch hole saw that went just around grab the outer race and press that down where it needs to be i didn't really show when I took this apart, um, so I'm gonna kind of show it out and put it together. You've got the, the shaft that goes in through here, and then there's a ring. And you can't 
quite see it. That, yeah, there you go. Okay, so there's a ring that comes around this. Um, and then there is a, a little notch in the shaft here. So this is pressed down to where that notch is at the top of that ring. And then the bearing is going to press on that. Um, this shaft is pressing into the bearing we just pressed into the uh, to the bottom there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move that over and press it in. I had to lower it just a little bit to get that to fit in there, um, but that's gonna work out real well. I'm not worried about dulling my hole saw because I've got a ton of them, so it's not a real big deal. And it goes in pretty smoothly. And now it's nicely pressed in. So that finishes that off. Get back to putting it together. That's gonna be it for part two. Real happy with the progress so far. I've ordered a motor starter. I've got a handle coming in and I'm gonna go pick up a belt. So I think once I've got all those things on it, I'll be able to hook it up and run it some. I did measure the run out again, uh, turning it by hand and it was only one, 1,000. So I'm pretty happy about that. The uh, table, I haven't decided if I'm gonna leave it alone. It only has those few little holes in it and just a little bit of pitting. Um, I think I'm probably just gonna leave it alone. I like the, uh, the survivor look. So that's it for this part. And uh, as soon as those parts come in, we'll get this thing running.